The first unit in the anatomy labs for both human anatomy and human AMP is to identify tissue types in the histology section. And so I'm going to go through each of these tissues, the same tissues that you'll see in your lab manual, and give you surface features or cell types, things that help you memorize them. You do not have to know these things for the practical, only the name of the tissue type. So let's begin, recall that there are four tissue types epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous. Now remember epithelial, epithelium, epithelial type tissues um, are layers, line organs, glands, etc. The first we start with is simple squamous epithelium. Simple describes the structure, so the cell arrangement, the opposite of simple would be stratified. If you can Look at this boundary here, you see one cell, one cell, one cell. This is probably skin, but it's just one flat layer, so it's simple. Squamous refers to the shape. Squamous means scale-like, like a snake skin or snake scale. And so I always think that squamous means squashed, kind of has this squashed potato pancake looking shape. And then it's an epithelium, so simple squamous epithelium. Here's another view. Um, some of the slides show an inner nucleus. That's also a giveaway that this bounded nucleus is one cell, one cell. So that's a simple squamous epithelium. You find simple squamous epithelium in places like lungs. And so here we have this layer of epithelial cells in this slide. This is just a picture of the lung. Now, if this is your first time looking at them, you're probably going to memorize pink and white. But that's a dangerous game because if you flip ahead, you'll see that the adipose tissue looks awfully similar to this. I'll show you in the adipose slide um, how to tell the difference. But notice how these are just sort of these layers, this inner lining here. It's showing those air sacs, the alveoli inside your lungs where that gas exchange occurs. And each one of these is a cell, epithelial lining. But the whole slide, you would simply state lung. This is also epithelium. It's simple because it's just one layer, but it's not in that squamous shape. It's cuboidal, shaped like a cube. And so if you can see this cube here, this cube here, this cube here, simple cuboidal epithelium. So they kind of run in these rows if you look at these types of squares. But you see the nucleus in the middle that shows you where each one of these cells are and they're bound by this square. So simple cuboidal epithelium. This is the thyroid. If you remember the thyroid is that bilobed organ, um, sort of anterior to your trachea, larynx, and your neck. And so each one of these lobes, in your glands has been cut, You're looking at a cross section. Some people think these look like fried eggs or boiled eggs. I don't know if I see that or not, but I just remember that when you see the thyroid, you see this sort of dense packet of material, some open space, this rounded membrane here, and it's bound by that epithelial cell in there. You can see them there, um, but this is the thyroid gland. Here, this one is pretty distinct. Um, not much looks like it. Remember, you should not identify color because it, it just depends on how each of these slides were stained as opposed to what color they are. Um, a lot of the liver are pink and red, but what I see is this huge sort of octagonal, hexagonal, how many sides is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, hexagonal, with that inner lobe in the middle. So you're looking at these lobes here found inside the liver. And so no notice how large they are with that inner circle there. This is your liver slide. Up next is the pancreas. And so again, you might be trying to memorize each of these as purple, but you know, it depends on, on how it was stained. And so in the pancreas, you can see, unlike the liver, where it had that big hexagonal, we see a big structure here that was cut, big structure here. Comparison between liver and pancreas, you can tell the difference. You see the big circles in the liver, you don't have those in the pancreas. This is still simple and it's epithelium, but unlike cuboidal, it's sort of in this rectangular 
piece and the nuclei are real close together. They're squashed. It kind of looks like the nuclei are kind of being, they're so squashed, some of the nuclei look like they're from the same cell, but they're not. And it's in this long column-shaped structure. So we call it simple columnar epithelium. Here it looks like it's a cross-section of an organ. This is your small intestine. Um, it's often identified as being flame-like. What you're seeing is, uh, it looks like perhaps a sagittal cut or transverse of your microvilli, um, probably sagittal here. And so you see them cut this direction. Each one of those little finger-like structures, you know, they can grab onto nutrients, et cetera. But you can, if you can get that search image, kind of erase some of those for you so you don't get distracted. But if you can begin to see those deep finger-like microvilli structures here, kind of sticking out down here, you have sort of this other row. As opposed to your large intestine, the colon, here I see these big dense packets of mucus cells. Those goblet cells are going to produce that mucus inside of that intestine. I see a big open space down here, which tells me this is some sort of open lumen or hollow space that's been cut. And so really, the way I always identified large intestine was just the packets of goblet cells here. Um, it's not, if you go back to the previous slide, uh, maybe not, we'll see that the microvilli had those big finger-like structures, whereas the large intestine does not have such things. Here we can see the stomach. Um, you can kind of see some smooth muscle down here, uh, long, deep striations, kind of showing the material here. Uh, the stomach, you'll want to move around a lot on the microscope to get a good image of. Um, there are several different angles you could approach the stomach. Um, you kind of see some open space here, but I always look for the smooth muscle and these these deep striations showing the, the rugi, how the, the stomach can be sort of expanded. Here, there are some variable slides in the boxes, depending on which one you look at. This is the appendix. If you picture the appendix um, like a hollow tube, like your pinky, this is a cross section of that. So the further you get to the bottom of that appendix, the less of this deep open space you're going to have in here. Now some of those may, you may see a, a huge open in, uh, center, open lumen. If I were to zoom in, you could see some of those similar goblet type cells or, or clear mucus producing cells that we saw in the large intestine and small intestine. That's kind of a giveaway. And that kind of always has this sort of half circle, circle like appearance. And so make sure to take a look at several of those so that you see the difference between them. This is my favorite one. It's probably the longest one that you have to identify. Pseudo stratified. So it's not simple, but it's not true stratification. Um, these cells are so close to each other and kind of squished. It looks like the nuclei are on top of each other. So it looks like a layer. So pseudo means fake, pseudo stratified. They're in columns, so it's called columnar. And they have the, these finger-like cilia on top, ciliated epithelium, pseudostratified, columnar, ciliated epithelium. Zoomed in, we can see this sort of pinkish layer here, and then these cells out here. This is transitional epithelium, stretchy epithelial type cells. Um, here we see the open space, that means that we're cut some sort of tube or lumen, um, but transitional epithelium. Zooming out, this is the ureter slide, so the tube that goes from your kidney to your bladder, the ureter. Zoomed in, I'm asking for the epithelium, transitional epithelium. Zoomed out, I want the ureter. Here we see two big open spaces, two big open spaces. So we're probably on the edge of some um, open organ, which is the bladder, urinary bladder to be specific. And we see some of that transitional epithelium, maybe some smooth muscle. but Transitional epithelium makes up the stretchy organ, urinary bladder. This is zoomed in. Now here, unlike the first simple, this is actually in layer. I see a layer here, layer here, layer here, layer here, layer here, a layer here. You get the idea, right? 
This is layers, so it's stratified. Stratified. Remember the first was simple, squamous epithelium, and so now we have stratified epithelium. If you know we're zoomed in here, so we're asking for that that particular tissue type zoomed out. You know we'd see the layer of skin, but this is zoomed in, and so it is stratified. Zoomed out, here we see the flaky layer, so the upper layer kind of flaking away, those dead keratinized cells leaving. This is skin. Some of your slides will say skin of foot, but we're just looking for skin or skin of foot, you know, it doesn't matter. Here we also see a stratified epithelial type, but what the big giveaway here is this big follicle right here. This is the scalp. Hairs growing out of those follicles. No, not everyone will have a hair. Depends on how the slide was cut, right? But this is that scalp. Usually we'll try to find a hair type, but you need to look at several of them. You see those cell types and you see the hairs there. Scalp. This one's a hard one. This one gets a lot of people, especially if it is positioned wrong on the microscope. We see an open space, which tells me tube or opening. Um, I see a layer of you know stratified epithelial but i see this big gland perhaps maybe a salivary gland you know if we were to zoom over we'd see some maybe muscle over there uh cartilage this is the esophagus the esophagus so that was kind of a bad drawing but the esophagus so i look for this layer as you look for the opening and then i look for glands of some sort now the esophagus if I can kind of erase it, if you look through the slide boxes, you'll see the esophagus won't always be this nice and perfect. And in fact, a lot of them kind of are kind of rough like that. It depends on how the slide was made. So you need to look at several of them and identify the features, not just the colors, but the features in this slide. This one, I think, is always easiest for me to identify. Yeah, you might be able to kind of see some of those. Well, maybe that's skin. No, I mean, it is. But what you're seeing here are things, structures called foliate papillae, or, you know, where you'll find your taste buds. This is the tongue. So to me, it just doesn't look like much else. The tongue is pretty, you know, apparent. And now we've moved to uh, connective tissues, uh, a couple connective tissues. One, uh, this is loose areolar connective tissue. Um, connective tissues come as loose or dense. This one's loose. Looks like a bunch of fibers, a bunch of string. This is a dense connective tissue. We're calling it white fibrous connective tissue. So you're, it's very similar to the smooth muscle, but in the next video, I'll show you the difference between the two. Um, if you could zoom in, it kind of looks like these individual threads, all of these, you know, sort of fibers, these, these proteins created here. You see the dark fibroblasts that pump out this protein structure, but it's not cells. What you're seeing are fibers, threads, white fibrous connective tissue. Here we have adipose tissue. Unlike the lung, here you can see these big fat droplets, adipose cells wrapped, these adipocytes, fat cells wrapped in that membrane. So this individual fat cell there and there and there, adipose tissue. 